Hi, saya Wan Zahra Rabi dan anda sedang menonton Ciri Khas and Nation Rises Malaysia di saluran National Geographic Sempena Hari Kemerdekaan. Malam ini kami akan mempersembahkan kisah legenda bola sepak Malaysia yang menjadi sumber inspirasi rakyat kita. Dia dikenali sebagai Supermok. For a brief period in Malaysia's history, one man's name resounded like no other. Soccer player Muqtada Hari rose from a humble background to carve a place in his nation's history. But at the peak of his fame, Malaysia's greatest ever football player would be cut down by a tragic illness. What made the man they call Supermok so exceptional? And did it also lead to his tragic end? Twenty years on, Mukta Dahari's family and closest friends break their silence to reveal the untold truth about the man known to the world as Supermok. That was the best of time in Malaysian football. Mancini, pada Isa, balik kepada Mokhtar, serang Mokhtar, goal! As a footballer, he was certainly the greatest that I've ever met in this country. Between the 70s and, and uh, right up until the mid-80s, it was the real golden era of Malaysian football. With Mokhtar Dahari spearheading the queen. Kepada Mokhtar Dahari, I must say that Throughout my career as a sports journalist, I've never seen another player like him. He was one of a kind. There was not another player like him. To me, Muqtad Hari was simply my dad. But as I grew older, I started to understand how the impact he has done for Malaysian football. After 19 years, people still remember who is Muqtada Hari, what he has done to the country, what he has done for Selangor. I can still remember clearly, it's in 1988, my father accompanied me to the school for the first time, that is my standard one. Everyone is looking at us and it is quite an awkward moment for me because to, the, to them, uh, he is Muqtada Hari, one of the greatest footballers in Malaysia. And, but for me, he is just a father who accompanied his son to the first day of school. But at that time, I realized that he is a public figure. Uh, every woman of him will be noticed. Quite a few occasions where people will come up to me and say, Are you the daughter of Mota Dahari? And I answer yes and I can see their faces lit up and just astonished by what I just said. People idolize him. I specifically remember one occasion where a stranger came and approached me and said, uh, excuse me, are you Muqtada Hari's daughter? And I said, yes. And he just said, can I shake your hand? And I said, why? He just continued and said, even though I don't get to shake your father's hand, but I'm so proud enough to have shook the daughter's hand. At that point, I felt the extension of his fame. Me and my friends, we grew up idolizing Mokhtar Dahari. And each time when we played two side uh, football matches and all that, all of us would be scrambling for the jersey number 10. And uh, I've been following Mokhtar uh, by reading about his scoring powers in the newspapers. And of course, there were not too many matches that were shown live on TV back then. So we had to follow uh, most of the matches uh, via radio telecast. You get to see papers coming up with a headline the next day, Supermog wins it for Selangor, Supermog strikes again, that kind of headline. And it became a, uh, became a synonymous with football fans then. They would always call him Supermog, being the superstar that he was.
But the man who became known as Supermon owes his success to something in his humble childhood. From an early age, Mukta was different. And now it seems possible that his tragic early death may be linked to the very things that contributed to his success. The first son of Amina Binti Shari Khan and lorry driver Dahari Abeng, Mokta Dahari moved to Kampong Pandan near the heart of Kuala Lumpur at the age of 11. In a neighborhood where most were poor, football and badminton required little equipment. Everyone could play, but Mukta Dahari stood out. I can remember when he was small, he used to play a lot of uh, games. He can play football, he can play uh, badminton, sepatakra, even hockey also he played for the school. Every evening, without fail, we would definitely go to the football field at Kampung Pandan. He played with his friends, neighbors, and then sometimes also he played with those senior players. He was my idol. And then, even when I was uh, a small kid also, I would like to be like him. But I know I couldn't be as good as him because he was very different. He was very different. Mukhtar's early sporting talent won him a place at one of Malaysia's most respected high schools, Victoria Institution. Mukhtar was chosen to play for the school team, and sport was well on its way to becoming his life. He always cycled to school. He would cycle to school from Kamubana to Victoria Institution in KL. I think that was about half an hour journey. When he came back, he always uh, trained. Or sometimes he came back from school and then he rest for a while and then he went back to the school for training. Nah, imbas kembali perkenalan saya dengan Mota ialah pada akhir tahun 70-an di mana kita ada perlawanan persahabatan bola sepak di antara pasukan saya di Datuk Kamat dan pasukan dia di Kamu Pandan. Rijuan Abdullah and Mokhtar Tahari would become close friends. The two had a lot in common. Kami rapat. Memang kami rapat. Saya yang Mokhtar tidak datang daripada keluarga yang begitu mewah. Eh. Kalau kami nak bekerja, kami nak uh, bekerja keras, kami ingin uh, melakukan yang terbaik. Walaupun pada masa itu, uh, peralatan sukan seperti but bola tidaklah begitu mahal. Pada kalau katakan masa itu, kalau kata RM60, tidak begitu mahal pada kami untuk beli kamu belikan but bola tapi kami masih lagi boleh bekerja keras untuk melakukan dia kadang-kadang kita bermain dengan kaki ayam untuk bermain bola sepak itu yang buat kita gigih untuk melakukan sesuatu untuk meningkatkan kita punya bola sepak untuk bola sepak in 1971 Mokhtar and Ridwan were both selected for the Selangor team in the Burnley Youth Cup kita telah menang besar dengan salah satu golnya dijaringkan oleh Mukhtar. Inilah gol yang pertama yang dijaringkan oleh Mukhtar dalam kerjanya sebagai pemain bola sepak yang mewakili Negeri Selangor. Mukhtar's performance won him a place in the Selangor State Senior Team. Number 9, Mukhtar. He was just 18 years old. Even his long-suffering parents were beginning to appreciate his preoccupation with football. Even though my late brother and my late father you know, seldom talk at home, I could see from my father, father, late father's face that he was very happy and he was very proud to see my late brother represented Slango because it's not an easy you not know, to represent Slango during that day. Within months, Mokta was named in the Slango team for the Malaysia Cup tournament. He scored nine goals during the tournament. Two months after that, Mokta Dahari was playing for his country, scoring ten goals in international matches in his first year as Malaysian football entered what is widely considered its golden era. He had graduated from school football to representing his nation in just two years. I don't think it's good for Mokhtar. It's good for Mokhtar. Then, just as it appeared Malaysia had a new superstar in the making, the nation's budding golden age was turned upside down. Someone stole the motorbike the new soccer star relied on to get to training. 
And Mokta uh, at that time was only a clerk, you know. He was a clerk with PKNS. Uh, he wasn't earning a big salary back then. And without the bike, it was like losing one foot of, of his, you know. He was crippled. Mokta announced he was quitting competitive football. The dream of a super mock seemed to be merely illusion. Kita bertemu kembali dalam Siri Khas A Nation Rises Malaysia di saluran National Geographic bersama saya Wan Zaleha Radhi. Bakat Mokta Dahari memang tersulah sejak zaman muda lagi. Tetapi statusnya sebagai seorang bintang mula menonjol pada tahun 1975 ketika menentang pasukan Arsenal dari England. The theft of his motorbike left Malaysia's amateur football star Mokhtar Dahari unable to get to training and games. The player announced he was quitting. But his sudden rise had already won the hearts of football fans. The fans all read it behind him. There was a lot of sentiments, outpouring of sentiments from the fans, saying that if someone has to steal a bike, why has it got to be Mokhtar's bike? And from then on, the Slangor team took the cue to rally uh, behind Mokta. In fact, they were also passing the hat around for donations to get him to buy a new bike. And a motorcycle company actually came forward and uh, presented him with a new motorcycle. So because of that, Mokta decided to come back. Mokta Dahari's fans were to be richly rewarded. The teams Mokhtar played for achieved unprecedented successes. Malaysia won its first soccer medal in the Asia Games. The nation beat South Korea and Japan to win the Merdeka Cup. Slangor went on to its greatest period of dominance in the Malaysia Cup. The successes sparked a football fever that has never been equaled. Every time Slango plays, we get 25,000. The stadium is almost full. And whenever we play in the final, 30,000, you know, overwhelming, you know, overflowing. The match between Selangor and Singapore at the National Stadium uh, is always something which all the fans in Singapore would wait for. In fact, the ticket for this 55,000 uh, sitting capacity uh, is always sold out one week before the game. So the atmosphere here is electrifying. The game starts at 7, but people will come at 3 o'clock just to wait for us to play the game. At one of Selangor's games here, a fan was killed. There was a stampede outside the stadium, you know, people queuing up just to get in. But that's the fervor and the eagerness of the fans to want to get into the stadium to watch the game. The surge of interest had good cause. Mokhtar Tahari scored 19 goals in one Malaysia Cup tournament. He scored five goals in one game against the Philippines. 24 goals in international games in one year. The boy from the neighborhoods had matured into a veritable soccer machine. As years goes by, I see there's someone special in the Malaysian squad. This guy is, well, his whole body full of muscle. You look at his body from the head to the toe, all full of muscle. Huh? It frightened the delight out of him. He's a di different kind of, he's different from other footballer. He can dribble, say, 50 meters, and he can shoot the ball uh, 100 miles an hour. He uh, reminds me of Maradona, you know. You look at Maradona and Mokta, the build is about the same. Mokta Dari was blessed with the physique that will put so many bodybuilders to shame. To massage to shame. To massage him is like massaging two players. 
because his legs are so enormous and his muscles are so thick, the strength that I needed to massage him is like massaging double subtoxin. That was how, how strong and how tough he was. And all the players in the team nicknamed him as Kuda, Force. So when he runs, he can hear the grounds. The grounds like, like a horse telling you, you better move away, otherwise I trample you. Semua kepada Mokta Dahari. Mokta Dahari naikkan. Tenangan-tenangannya begitu kuat. Ada juga kawan mengatakan tenangan yang dilakukan oleh Mokta Dahari ini mencederakan uh, penjaga gol. Kalau ada yang buat kat situ, semua lari, lari, akan lari daripada situ. Pasal tenangan dia begitu baik sekali. Dia ada ada speed. Dia boleh dia boleh genjur dengan laju. Dan uh, dia juga boleh heading. Jadi ke aset dia tu ada tendang, tendang kanan, tendang kiri, ada heading. Jadi maka dengan itu dia lebih berbahaya pada lain-lain pemain. We must be very fit. And to face him, it's a nightmare to face him, you know. Because we have to put at least two guys near him all the time. They don't give us a little bit of a chance to move with the ball or, you know, to push and run. One Mokta is equal to what, three Malaysians, so, you know. So we better take two men to take care of him. It's, you know, it's a nightmare, like, you know, to be honest. And even though sometimes we have two or three players marking him, he, somehow he will get out of it. And, 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 you know, do an acrobatic, you know, shot and so on. So he's really good. Uh, so playing against Mokhtar Dari is never easy. It's always like a nightmare, if you ask me. I have not seen anyone, not even in the World Cup, you know, trust me, a striker that has all the attributes of this striker, uh, Mokhtar Dari. A striker that he has everything. Mokhtar may have been world class. But he would not abandon his homeland to prove it. When in our few years of friendship, Mokta speaks a lot about his passion for football. Mokta and I met through a mutual friend when he came over to my hometown, Kotobaru, to play a game. I was then 16 years old and uh, we continued our friendship when I came down to Kuala Lumpur to pursue my studies. I knew Mokta for seven years before I get married to him. When I commented, are you going to play for another state, you know, since other states are offering you better perks, you know, and he will look at me and say, I live and die for slang. I feel that he's a truly slang orient, you know. Money is not the driving factor, you know. Mokta works in the bank, or oh, I mean, he's not a professional player where full-time football is his uh, job. So he, he, he goes to work every morning and then knock off in the evening, goes for training. And he gets an allowance. I think those days maybe about 50 ringgit a day for training. And then matches, when there is a match at the weekend, he normally will get about $200 uh, match allowance. And uh, if he wins, uh, he'll get maybe another two 300 ringgit uh, so a month he might be able to make around uh, two three thousand ringgit playing football but if he's today playing in a semi-professional league he probably will be the top earner maybe with a monthly income of uh, twenty thousand you know playing full-time football it's not about money you know Mokta, he never asked me when i was manager for uh, more money you know in fact he says uh I mean, football is my blood and soul, you know. I will live and die with football. He used to joke with me, you know. Such was the star's passion for the game. Mokhtar put the game ahead of his own health. They give their all. They give their everything. They don't even mind breaking a leg or breaking a hand for, the, for Malaysia to win a football match. Every time the, uh, the games, in the, especially in the final, I ask him, can we win? He always has a positive answer, sure, we will deliver it to you. 
there was some nowadays when you ask the players that maybe or possibly the one of the game in the final he he was uh, get a high fever but because he promised that we can win he played so i brought him to the hospital and uh, the doctor was very concerned about his health he they wanted to hospitalize him but knowing mokta tomorrow is a game against singapore so he was reluctant to be hospitalized even with the fever he played a game and he played the game and scored a goal there would be another remarkable goal when malaysia took the field against english club Awesome. That was a game that will live forever in the memory of Malaysian football. An amateur team, the Malaysian national team, played against one of the giants of English football, the very professional Arsenal, and the amateurs won. Malaysia beat Arsenal 2-0, and both goals were scored by none other than Mokhtar Dahari. It made Malaysian proud because it has been the desire of every football fraternity in Malaysia. to beat a uh, first division club from England but just when it seemed nothing could stop Malaysia's star striker he proved only human pada masa tu beliau bermain dengan uh, untuk Piala FM padang begitu uh, berat masa tu uh, selepas hujan satu hantaran bola pada beliau dia, dia cuba pusing ini yang buat yang kaki yang sebelah yang tersangkut di 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 rumput dan dia dia menghasilkan satu satu uh, kepedihan pada lutut dia. The injury damaged the cushion of cartilage known as the meniscus in Mukhtar's knee, requiring surgery to remove damaged tissue. But when he came back, he came back with a vengeance, scoring five goals in the Southeast Asia Games semi-finals against East Asian superpower Burma. Merdeka Stadium resounded to cries of Superman. That name became permanent when the team clashed with star-studded European professionals, England B. In that game, Malaysia was trailing in the first half. Mota picked the ball somewhere in our half and raced through and let go a strike. I think almost 25 30 yards away from the goal. Mokhtar went past three England defenders as if they weren't there and then took a big swipe with his stable right foot. The ball swerved in mid air and bit Joe Corrigan in the England goal all ends up. He unleashed a fantastic shot which went past the goalkeeper Joe Corrigan and went into goal. Keputusan ya pada masa tu ialah Um, uh, draw kita sebagai amateur setanding dengan pemain-pemain profesional di Inggeris masa itu ini satu kejayaan pada pasukan Malaysia masa itu ini satu kejayaan pada pada kita semua in 1979 at the peak of his success the man they called Supermock finally wedded the love of his life but at first my family objected to our friendship but somehow rather Mokhtar is a gentleman he will approach my mother my brothers you know so sort of uh, to portray that he's a very responsible and uh, caring uh, person that uh, i guess good enough to marry your daughter that same year malaysia won its second consecutive soccer gold medal in the sea games Mota is so special, you know. He is even the players are his fan, you know. He has that respect and uh, comradeship, you know. But the football superstar's meteoric path was about to take a series of twists that would leave the nation gasping in disbelief. Other than his pull of uh, 
fans and supporters. He also had his uh, pool of detractors, people who were so envious of him, you know, that he kept on scoring goals, playing great football matches and all that, to a point that there were also accusations hurled at him, you know. Some accuse him of taking drugs, steroids, and so whatever it was. At one particular match, I was watching Mokta playing football, and then there was a fan who was just going overboard with his criticism on Mokta. It was just more like, not the game, but on personal attack. But nobody could guess the truth that was waiting to unfold. Anda macam nonton Siri Hot A Nation Rises Malaysia di saluran National Geographic bersama saya Wan Zaliha Rabi. Pasukan kebangsaan amat dijeruni pihak lawan apabila Super Mok bermain. Tetapi walaupun dia raja di stadium, Mokta Dahari tidak terlepas dari tumpuan pengadil ketika di atas padang. For 10 years, Mokhtar Dahari reigned as the superstar of Asian football. But dark clouds were gathering over his glittering career. Only now is the truth of the superstar's final years able to be revealed. With the success and worship came suspicion and pressure. And this is the sad thing. When a person of that caliber has that kind of strength, many of these ugly Malaysians, I would say, they doubted him. They accused him of involving in drugs. Or maybe among the Malays, they call it suso. Those are the supernatural things that will make a person that strong, that fit, and that fast. Uh, as a striker, he was uh, expected to be scoring regularly, but he was going through a hard time as in uh, most footballers, they would be off form at times. Eh? He was being booed at each time he got the ball. Pasukan lawan memang dah tahu pokok tak mota. Jadi seorang tu akan ikut dia. Rasa-rasa tak boleh, dia tambah lagi satu. Untuk dua orang kawal dia. Jadi mulalah peminat pun boleh cakap lah pasal mota ni. Ini yang main tak bagus ke apa, kenapa ni. Dia patut bola tu, dia patut tinggal larian, dia patut tinggal tenangan, dia patut masuk macam mana, dia tenang dah tak kuat ni. Jadi orang tak tahu masalah kecintaan yang dia ambil dia dan latihan. But not known to too many people, Mokta was actually suffering. He had his meniscus removed from both his knees and he told me one day that at the end of every match and at the end of every training session, he had to dip both his knees in a basin of warm water, you know, filled with salt. And he would spend maybe an hour or so, you know, just to uh, ease himself of the discomfort in the knees. In fact, he cried, you know, one night, I think, Slangon lost in the semi-final. He says he felt sorry for the fans. They were watching the game even though it rains heavily. So he can, he felt that he has disappointed his fans. Honestly, he just told me that he loves to see the fan when he scores the goal. You know, you know that is the driving force behind him. You know, when the fan celebrates, you know, and sort of they celebrate together. That's the thrill that he always gets. So when that's why when he loses a game, he gets very moody because he feels that the fan is. The fan is very disappointed about the, the, I mean, losing a game. And not only that, uh, his wife and son, who were among the spectators on the stands, were also abused at the end of, of matches. You know? At one particular match, I was watching Mokta playing football, and then there was a fan who was just going overboard with his criticism on Mokta, it was just more like, not the game, but on personal attacks. He mentioned nasty things and I lost my cool and I walked to the fan and wanted to pay his ticket and tell him to walk off the stadium. I was very upset, but when I told Mokta about the incident, he was upset with me because he feels that I should take the pressure. But while Mokhtar attempted to brush the attacks aside,
attempted to brush the attacks aside, they took a toll. He, he told me that he valued his family dearer than any other things in the world, he says. If the fans started to abuse my wife and son, that would be the end of my playing days, he said. And that was a time when he decided to quit. I remember one time, you know, he just picked me up from work. He mentioned that he has resigned from the national team. And I say, why? Why? When? And he says, this morning? I look at him. Why? And he, he, he says, football is no longer a clean game. I wanted to, so, I mean, I wanted to discuss, but he says, let's drop the subject. I mean, he, did, he really, I know that resigning from the national team was very painful for him. But Supermock would not be allowed to slip away so easily. After just 11 months, he was called back to the Malaysian team. He was persuaded by certain people in the football to try to make a comeback for the last time. You know, like I say, for the love of the game, he'll do anything. Mokhtar Dahari would go on to captain the national side in the Southeast Asian Games, eventually helping his home state to 10 Malaysia Cup wins in 14 years. But the years of top-level football were taking a toll. I remember uh, the year was 1986. In 1985, Slanger were beaten by Johor in the Malaysia Cup final. So it was such a grudge match that um, Mokhtar would, you know, would want to win at all costs. So he decided that that Malaysia Cup final match was to be his last. They beat Johor 6-1 in the final. Uh, after the match, then the following day, you will find that, you know, people are commenting that he was playing like a 20-year-old. At that time, he was almost 34 years old. Uh, that is why Mokta, in the minds of the football fan, he's a super monk. Dan itulah Mokta Dari. Huh? Lepas dia, dia berjaya dan dia akan bersara dengan berjayanya. I cannot forget, after the game, he came to me, he opened his jersey, he, he said, it's for you, I'm going to retire. We were too happy when we mocked us that we do, he's going to retire, we were too happy we won. We not register what you say until you give the jersey, after a few days we realized it. Mokhtar's focus shifted to helping others as a coach and in other ways. Mokhtar came to me and asked me this, uh, will you write a book for me? Not so much in uh, glorifying himself, he says, but to serve as a motivation to the young players, to the aspiring footballers of the future of Malaysia. I said, Mokhtar, that would be such an honor for me. But all plans came to a sudden stop. Mokhtar came back from training one day and mentioned to me that uh, when he went into contact with an opponent, he just fell, you know, without him realizing that he sort of, he cannot break his fall. Jadi dia jatuh terlentang lah, terlentang. Jadi semua pemain pun ketawakan dia. Dengan keadaan fizikal dia yang tegak tu, dia boleh jatuh begitu, terlentang. Dia rasa dia macam kurang tidur. Masa tu dia dah baru dapat anak yang ke ketiga saya yang ketiga. Tapi lama 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 tetap benda tu makin lama makin tengok. After a few weeks, he felt that he he was he was having a very bad sore throat, and he knew that something was wrong with him. It was late 1988 when he decided to go for a thorough medical checkup. And uh, it was diagnosed by a by a doctor that he's suffering from motor neuron disease. You know. And um, Mokta didn't know much about the disease that time. So we will just say we will not give up hope. We will go for a second opinion. Uh, that is when we decided to go to London, uh, not to seek treatment, but to ask for a second opinion. Motor neuron disease disrupts the brain's messages to the muscles. 
muscle activity becomes erratic and eventually stops. There is no known cure. I remember uh, I cued the doctor that I wanted to speak to him first before he speaks to Mokta. So I talked to the doctor, whatever you have to say, you give him hope. You can tell him that he can get worse, he can stay permanently like this, or he will he will gradually get better. I told, but you can tell me the truth. So the doctor was explaining that usually it will last for about two or three years. He will start having difficulty breathing, you know. And uh, as promised, the doctor told him, Mokta, this is motor neuron, you know, um, you will get better or you stay permanently like this or you get worse. Tenku was determined to maintain as positive an outlook as possible. Only now, she reveals that she cultivated one of Malaysia's enduring myths. The media were told that Mukhtar had muscular dystrophy, a disease with similar symptoms. The paper keep on telling that he's suffering from muscular dystrophy because I refused to tell his motor neuron because I don't want people to do research and start telling him that this is the reason. I want Mokta to be calm, I want Mokta to have hope and I want Mokta to just go through a normal life. Uh, I was five at the time when he was first diagnosed with a motor neuron disease. I couldn't comprehend what was going on. So I remember him being weak, he couldn't move around on his own and he was on the wheelchair most of the time. Although he is sick, he is still the same person, a joyful person, a loving father. Um, physically he is sick, but emotionally he is a happy man. He's a normal person for me. My mom told me that I was his little assistant back then. I would bring him food or newspaper as he couldn't move. I was his constant companion at home. At first he can walk and then sit on a wheelchair and then the family tried everything from normal medicine to Malay medicine to Chinese acupuncture, everything. Banyak kebang-kebang ini mengatakan uh, uh, masa Mukta sakit, Mukta di, uh, dibuat, dibuat oleh orang. Kan? Bagi pandangan saya, uh, saya kenal Mukta. Mukta tak ada siapa-siapa yang, uh, tak, ada, tak ada orang musuh dengan Mukta tentang uh, uh, ada yang buatan orang saya rasa tak, tak benarlah tak benarlah itu tak benar In fact Mokhtar may have been cursed by the very physiology that made him great Research suggests football talent and motor neuron disease may be linked with professional footballers six times more likely to develop the disease Research now concentrates on four factors extreme physical exercise football related injuries toxic chemicals used on football fields performance and injury related drugs of the four possible factors it seems only one can be ruled out for supermock but let me put this straight to you lah you are wrong he was a straight 100 percent made in malaysia drug free alcohol free and nicotine free those are the three things that I knew for one that he never got inside the office. The real cause of Supermock's illness will likely never be known. The symptoms simply worsened day after day. Only his will keeping him going. He was such a humble man. And even when he was sick, when normal people would be discouraged and just give up on life, and he's so positive about it and full of life. Masa dia sakit pun dia melatih uh, pasukan konjit dia eh, dengan kursi roda dia. Eh. From a big bubbling person with full of energy, suddenly he's ridden to a wheelchair. The body weight about two thirds of what he was, and then his speech was slurred. His eyes were red. His coordination, his hand movements were limited. It's very difficult to describe, you know. It really makes you sick. It really makes, you know, you cry, you know.
But Moktang, he himself, he said, well, I've given my all. I've given my all. If it's time for me to go, I'm more than prepared for it. He knew. In fact, he, on many occasions, he tried to discuss with me, should I go, you know, but then uh, I would avoid that question. So I was thinking, perhaps there's something that, that we can do to really, you know, make him more at ease, make him more comfortable. And that is when the manager of the football team, Dr. Majlan, suggested that he should look for divine intervention. And this is where the Mecca trip came in. The devout Muslim, his wife and young daughter, made a pilgrimage to Islam's holy city to circumnavigate the holy Kaaba in the sacred journey known as Hajj. He sat on a wheelchair and I pushed around. But there are places where the wheelchair could not be used. I got to carry him over my shoulder, especially when we go down the steps or when we go up the steps. Well, he and Harry is my brother. On the fourth day, we have to perform the farewell. Farewell tawaf, that means to say go around the Kaaba. Maybe asking God, maybe if, if, if God willing, we'll come back again and so on. But first, they needed to touch the black stone the black stone is pushed at the end of the Kaaba. So it is a desire for every Muslim who went to Mecca to kiss that black stone. You must picture yourself that at that time there were thousands of people circumvaluting around the Kaaba. So it was about maybe 30 yards away. I asked him, Mota, do you want to kiss the stone? He said, yes. Okay, let's go. So I carried him and walked towards the stone. We were almost there. But about five yards before the stone, my trusted legs gave way. Both of us collapsed. We collapsed, motionless. You look at me and I look at you, now what? But suddenly, out of the blues, somebody, very big, strong person, picked us up, held our neck together, pushed the other pilgrims away, and put us near the stone. He held Mokta by the neck and pushed him to kiss the stone. After that, he pulled back and he pushed by it. I kissed the stone. And when we finished, he wanted to say thank you to him. He was not there anymore. Call that intervention? Where? Well, miracles do happen. So we arrived back in Kuala Lumpur. Everything was satisfied. But by July 1991, Mokhtar Dahari had been fighting motor neuron disease for almost three years. Anda masih menonton Siri Hot Nation Rises Malaysia di saluran National Geographic bersama saya Wan Zaliha Radin. Setelah menonton pasukan kesayangannya Selangor memenangi Piala Malaysia sebanyak 10 kali. Mokta membuat keputusan untuk bersara dari arena bola sepak. Tetapi sebenarnya keputusan itu dibayangi maksud tersilap. Around 8, something around, I think around 8.30, um, my uncle woke me up, um, asked us to get dressed, to go to the hospital. And that time, I complained to him <laughs> uh, why we need to go to the hospital early in the morning. And then he just, he just, didn't say anything, just asked us to get dressed. Um, but when I saw my mom at the hospital crying, and that I, at that time I knew that my my father had passed away. That thing cannot cannot be described by word. Okay, for a ten year old um, to lose a father, and at, at that time I just cannot think. Uh, at that time I. I knew that I had, had lost my, my father. On July 11th, 1991, Mokhtar lost his battle with motor neuron disease. He was just 37 years old.
Until today, it's very difficult for me to talk about Mokta. But uh, for us, Mokta is, whenever we talk, our everyday conversation, Mokta's name will always crop up. You know, my children will say, is this Papa's favorite food? And I'll mention, this is Papa's favorite thing, you know. So as though, he's always part of us, you know. I do miss my dad a lot. But as I grew older, I know God loves him more and I can accept that. I love remembering him. I love watching him and now it's all memory. But a memory that will linger on forever. Mukta dari ialah kawan pada semua orang Bukan pada saya, untuk semua orang Saya hanya kawan rapat pada dia Dia kawan pada semua orang Itulah Mukta dari A great loss to, to me Because he was a good friend, a good player And a great loss to the country and the state of Sri Until today, you cannot replace Mokta. Uh, you know, I think it's not my opinion, you know. I think everybody can find a personality like Mokta, you know, who's hardworking on the field, who's humble, who's an inspiration, you know, who's a good uh, family man, you know, doesn't loaf around, you know, doesn't do naughty things, doesn't go nightclub, doesn't spend his money uh, foolishly, doesn't smoke, or he doesn't drink. To me, my, my father is very special. He is one in a million. I'm proud to be Mokta Dahrisa. He has done so much to change the face of Malaysian football. Even though he has passed on for such a long time, people are still talking about him. That's the impact of Mokta Dahari. I just want to tell the whole world, I was proud, I am proud, and will always be proud. Then, apa Mokta boleh buat? Saya rasa sekarang pemain-pemain patut boleh buat. Tidak ada beza dengan 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 untuk berjaya. Berjaya dengan cara senang saya rasa dah tak adalah. Kita kena berjaya dengan cara susah. Muktah dari telah proofkan yang one gate bukan pentingnya. Yang penting ialah kesungguhan dan matlamat pemain sebut untuk berjayakan diri dia untuk kejayaan masa depan. Yeah!